I decided to buy a smart trainer so I could keep fit in the off season. I plunked down a big chunk of cash, got it home, set it up, and then found out I had to buy a bunch more stuff in order for it to work properly with my favorite cycling app and also make it more convenient to use. I decided to make this video so I can pass along some tips and tricks I learned along the way in order for me to get the whole thing working properly. So clip in and let's go! Well I settled on a Wahoo kicker and the first thing I came to learn is there's no power switch on these devices. I checked here on the power supply, nothing here. And the kicker connects into the power supply via this little adapter, as you can see here. You connect it in. I thought maybe there was a switch here on the unit, but there's absolutely nothing to be found. So you're stuck with either plugging this in, taking it out every time, which I thought was going to be inconvenient and probably wear out my receptacle. So what I did is I invested into one of these little guys. So now what I do is stay down there. I basically plug it in and switch it on and off from here. When it comes to smart trainers, inevitably you'll come across a communications problem between the smart trainer, your training device, or even some of the sensors reporting to your training app. So let's discuss a few tips I have for you when it comes to communication. Before we go on to those communication tips, let me explain to you a computer term you're going to hear that you may not know, and that is dongle. A dongle is a device you plug into your computer or phone that gives it some enhanced capabilities. Here are a couple of examples. This dongle is a memory card reader. You plug this into your computer and now you can read memory cards from your camera or other device. Here's another dongle for Bluetooth communication. And here's another dongle for N plus communication. All you have to do is plug the dongle into your device and you're off and running. All smart trainers communicate wirelessly. There's no option for you to plug a cable into the trainer and into your computer so it can transfer data back and forth. Your options for wireless communication are either Bluetooth or N+. Some trainers include both technologies and some only use the one. Let's discuss Bluetooth. Bluetooth's been widely adopted by manufacturers and incorporated into many of their products. Most people have used Bluetooth on their phones to pair up to things like an external speaker, their car stereo, or even a set of headphones. Bluetooth's a relatively easy technology to use, but when there's too many Bluetooth devices close by, you end up with what we call Bluetooth interference. Let me give you an example of how this can happen. I got a tablet with a training app on it, a bike on a trainer, and me wanting to do a workout. The first thing I need to do is pair up the trainer to the tablet so that the training app can communicate to the trainer. I'm using Bluetooth, so the first thing I need to do is find the device in my tablet. Here it is. I select the device and have it pair. Unfortunately, I have my phone that's also Bluetooth close by. I start my workout and realize there's no data in the training app. What's happened here is the trainers paired itself with the phone. And this can easily happen with any other Bluetooth device that's close by. The trainer may end up not pairing with the tablet, which you need it to do, but it pairs itself with another Bluetooth device. So the only option you have is to either get rid of the Bluetooth device turn the Bluetooth device off, or get the Bluetooth device far away from the trainer. If none of these options are possible, then think about using N+. N+, is popular with many fitness devices. The nice thing about N+, is that the sensors can broadcast out to more than one receiving device. You could easily broadcast out your heart rate to a training app and also to a running watch at the same time, without either of them interfering with one another. In our Bluetooth example, we can't get rid of the Bluetooth interference. The best thing to do would be switch over to Ant Plus. If the device you're using your training app on can't communicate in Ant Plus, just go out and buy yourself an Ant Plus dongle. Now your training app will be able to receive the data being broadcast by the Ant Plus sensors. The nice thing here is all the Bluetooth devices can coexist with Ant Plus without interference. The other added benefit is if you already own N Plus sensors, you can use them with your training app without having to go out and buy new ones. N Plus sounds like the answer to all your problems, except you've got to be aware of this. N Plus devices can only communicate within a 2 meter radius, that's about 7 feet. If the device you're using your training app on is farther than that, 
then all you have to do is invest in one of these, a USB extension cable. This will enable you to get the dongle close enough so that all the devices and sensors can communicate with each other. When I first got the trainer, I didn't even consider a training mat until I started walking back and forth on my hardwood floor and then this what? happened. Uh oh. Are you walking across the wood floor with your cycling shoes? And this happened. Oh my god, you're ruining the floor and you're doing it again and again and again. In order to stop all of that, I thought it was going to be a great idea to invest in a training mat. The training mat helped solve several problems. First, it stopped me from walking back and forth on my hardwood floor with my cycling shoes, saving my floor. Secondly, the training mat catches all the sweat that comes off of me during my training sessions, saving my floor. And thirdly, the training mat also helps to dampen some of the vibration that comes from the trainer when you're using it. An investment well worth the money. I was able to pick one of these up at my local hardware store for about 30 bucks. The next thing I'd like to talk about are the training apps. No, I'm not going to debate the pros and cons of each app. There's a lot of YouTube videos out there that do a better job than I ever could. What I'm here to discuss are a few of the things I learned along the way when I was trying to select my training app. The first thing is all the training apps offer you a free trial version in which you can test out all the features. The one thing that turned me off several of these apps was in order for me to start my trial, I had to surrender my credit card information. This left a bad taste in my mouth and I decided not to try those apps. I couldn't understand why a company would ask for your credit card information during a free trial period and you don't even know what you're getting. When I saw that, I decided to look elsewhere. Another thing I learned along the way about the training apps is that they don't work on all devices. I really wanted to join up Zwift because my friends hold virtual rides on the weekends. I thought it'd be a lot of fun to connect with the guys during the off season until we really got out on the road. What I soon found out was Zwift doesn't work on Windows 32-bit devices. I wasn't prepared to go out and buy a new tablet so I could use Zwift. I decided to look around and ended up finding another app that really worked for me. Let's talk about firmware updates. Firmware is the program that controls the trainer and gives it all its features. You want to update the firmware when you first buy the trainer and get it home. Or you may want to do it from time to time to see if anything has been updated on the trainer. All firmware updates are done via Bluetooth. All you have to do is get your phone, download the app from the manufacturer of your trainer, and have it checked to see if there's a new firmware update. If there is, download the firmware into your trainer. The updated firmware will fix any bugs the manufacturer has found since the trainer was made. It will also fix any problems customers have been complaining about, and it may also introduce new features to the trainer that the manufacturer wants to introduce to its customers, or basically trying to play catch up with the competition. <laughs> well, the trainer's finally up and running, and that brings an end to this video. You had a chance to see some of the things I had to go through, like learning about firmware updates, resolving communications issues, and how I went about trying to find the right cycling app for me. You also got a chance to see some of the things I had to buy that I didn't think I would need, like a power bar with an on-off switch, and also the floor mat. I hope some of these tips are going to help you when you get your trainer, or it may have provided you an idea that you never thought of. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, subscribe.